called to order the uh, work session for March 3rd, and um, we'll start with uh, Ms. Ridge. So um, I hadn't planned on being here, so that's why I'm not on the agenda, but in the last uh, day, uh, we've received notice that there will be a document sent from NDOT to DocuSign uh, for um, commissioner approval. And um, I'm being told it's changing. It was a mistake on NDOT's end in the sample road contract phase two um, of using the word exhibit versus attachment. Um, so they are changing that. So if, we, if your permission, I would forward that to and or I would Angie will get it and then be able to sign it after you've approved it. Okay, great. So we could do that over email. Uh, we don't. Do we have to come in and do a notary or anything? Okay, good. Excellent. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks for that update. Um, next we have uh, Tim Street and Dave Williams, uh, City of Bloomington. Hi, good morning, commissioners. I'm Tim Street. I'm with the City of Bloomington Parks and Rec Department. Uh, I am the new uh, Operations and Development Division Director, uh, having started in January uh, for Dave Williams, who retired. Um, Dave, thankfully, has still been around helping out and uh, helping transfer some projects and everything. He's, he's a great guy for sticking around and helping me out. Uh, he's on here, too, if we get into some questions about history or things like that. Uh, we've also got a few other parks staff uh, on as well, in case there's a question we could we could bring one of them in, um, as well as Adrian Reed, um, who is the engineer with Aztec Engineering we've been working with. So um, I want to just talk a little bit today about the Duke Trail. Um, it might be something you heard of and are a little bit familiar with. Uh, this is something that we wanted to bring to you uh, to, to ask for your support and to see what questions you would have and what involvement in the process you would like to see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my PowerPoint here. I know it's cliche, but can everybody see that okay? Yes. Okay, great. So, uh, like I said, I, I just started in January and, um, you know, was made aware of this potential trail corridor, um, the Duke Trail, which would run east-west, basically from just across the entrance um, to Switchyard Park uh, on Rogers Street, uh, where there's a Duke substation there, uh, following these high transmission wires to the west uh, towards Weimar Road. Uh, I have to say, I, I stepped out there um, the other day and, and kind of took a look and you get up over the first rise on the east and uh, it feels like you're very far away. It's a beautiful section of trail. Um, so this is where the trail would commence, uh, right across the road from Switchyard Park, um, heading to the west across Rogers Street. Um, and again, this is just a view um, right as you get up over the rise there. So the reason we're here with you today is um, this runs on a Duke easement that is on county owned property. Um, if you can see this, this is the entire potential trail corridor. So uh, starting at the east side uh, at Rogers Road, it follows the black lined easement, um, which has been in place, uh, as we discovered, since around the 1950s, at least, um, for these high transmission wires. Uh, and phase one, which we've identified right now, uh, in which we are working on bicentennial bond funding um, through the city, uh, could run to the end of phase one, uh, which is kind of right in the middle here, and I'm gonna blow this up in a second too if this looks kind of small, um, which is basically kind of straight north of Summit Elementary uh, at the western edge, the northwestern edge rather, of RCA Park. Uh, the total trail length there is about a mile uh, in distance um, from Rogers Street to that end of phase one. Uh, and then you, as you can see, if it would carry on to Weimar uh, in the future, um, that would be off of county property um, and onto some uh, private property um, that currently has some PUD discussion, things like that. Uh, and we would actively work on identifying a phase two. Um, this would create a really amazing trail through the woods back there, uh, connecting east-west from Switchyard um, over to the west, uh, close to Wapahani Mountain Bike Park, uh, could create a connection there. Uh, and then eventually, uh, we may look at master plan ways to get this connected back down south to the Clear Creek Trail, um, which would create a really fantastic loop um, all the way around this, this sort of southwest side of Bloomington. Um, the area in green here is the county property uh, in question. Uh, looked up the history of this. It, it had uh, been with Indiana Limestone Company and later the Bloomington Hoosier Stone Company. Um, uh, as identified by the easements. Um, I sent those to Margie 
Um, so she's seen those and, and knows what's in those easements. Uh, I understand there was at one point maybe a, a plan to develop some kind of juvenile detention rehabilitation center on this property. Uh, it looks like the county reacquired it in 2002. Um, just zooming in on phase one so you can see that a little bit better. Um, so the easement is there along the bottom uh, in between the, the dotted black lines. Uh, again, starting east at Rogers Street with the trailhead, um, extending west past the power stations. Uh, it would pick up a connection to RCA Park uh, about the middle there. And Sorry, was there a question? Um, a, would pick up a connection to RCA Park and also there is a habitat development um, happening right in there too that would also connect. Then continuing west to the end of phase one that we've identified, which would basically be the western edge of the county property. Uh, phase two has several different options. Um, these haven't all been developed out, um, but would eventually go through what is the Sudbury property um, along this easement potentially um, and connecting west to Lima Road. Um, again, phase two is, is farther out, but we would love to, to see this connect all the way through and create a really great uh, east-west connection for both the city and the county. Um, this is looking west um, towards Weimar Road from approximately where phase one would end. It's a little bit probably beyond where phase one would end, but um, is looking west. So this is just a fantastically beautiful area. Um, obviously the easement is already there. Uh, and so we wanted to, to approach you today um, with just a few questions. You know, number one, um, is the county open to developing this trail through the property uh, along this easement? Um, Number two, we would need to look at the easements and make sure the appropriate language is included in those easements and potentially update those. Um, Daniel Dixon, our council, is on. Um, and I know we could work with, with Margie and, and whomever um, to develop that. And uh, let's see. It, the third question would just be, you know, what would the county's involvement, what would you like for that to be going forward? If you're willing to support, you know, would, would you like to have a representative uh, in as we, we sort of work through this? And, uh, and, and who that might be. So I'm going to pause there um, and, and take some questions or thoughts or feedback. And if it's helpful, I'll, I'll go back to the phase one map here so you can see it. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Street. Uh, let's uh, do a round robin here since we have comments, questions. Uh, Commissioner Jones? Uh, I'll wait for. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Githens? Um, yeah, I have a, a question about whether or not people would a actively use a trail where, where they're walking under all these high power uh, lines. Um, I don't find that particularly aesthetic or pleasing myself. Um, and so I'm not sure that this is the right direction to be heading. I'm willing to be convinced, but I'm not sure. sure yeah, uh, fair question. I know. Um, Trails along power line easements have been very popular um, with Duke. Um, Duke has an entire program um, that they are operating just to open up trails and easements because generally speaking, they are um, ready to go um, for paths and trails. Um, the, the path wouldn't necessarily be directly under the power lines the whole time. Um, and I have to tell you from personally, just getting out there and, and seeing the beauty out there, um, I, I found it to be a very beautiful area despite the, the two lines of of power lines and towers out there. Um, there is one thing we see is a constant demand um, when we do surveys and uh, talk to the public and engage with the public um, for trails and trail space. Um, we've seen that they have a positive value on development, um, create vital community connections, uh, and, and generally are, are great for the community overall. I would add to Tim that um... The easement width is, I believe, 150 feet wide. And as you indicated, um, Duke would, does not want us to be directly under the power lines. Uh, they want us to be a minimum of 25 feet away from the base of any. I, I didn't hear that. Yeah, Mr. Williams, you, you got quiet there. We didn't hear your whole statement. I, I'm sorry, the, the, the easement width is 150 feet. And uh, Duke has already expressed a requirement that we could not be underneath any of the towers. We would have to be 25 feet away at minimum. 
still constrained by the easement width, but uh, not directly underneath the towers. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think it blacked out again, but it would require that the commissioners provide an easement to the city. That's correct. Because the easement does not speak to any other uses currently than electric transmission, not a recreational trail. Right. And so if, if we're looking at this image here, which is a great image to have up on the screen, so I appreciate that you brought these. Um, which side of the of the lines are you um, would you be looking at to the left or the right as, as we're viewing them here? Sure, that, that's a great question, Julie. So in this photo, we happen to be sort of at the end of phase one looking west. Um, and so the, the natural part would, would seem to be sort of this, you can kind of see a track over on the left-hand side. Um, right. I will say we have not gotten to the final design. Um, we've only gone to 30% because we wanted to make sure we engaged with you um, and, and had the support of the county um, and, and had representation before moving forward. Um, so that said, you know, we would certainly look at the lay of the land, um, accessibility, um, all of those things to factor in to make sure the trail is, is safe and effective in terms of picking the exact route. Um, that said, I know Adrian um, has largely identified that. So you can see for the most part um, on the east side, it sort of starts off centrally. Uh, and then for the most part is hugging the northern side of the easement. Yeah. Um, the high transmission towers tend to be on the southern side. And then there's regular wood towers uh, a little bit farther to the north of those, as you can right. see here. Okay, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so it's something that we're going to want to take under advisement. Um, I do have a question about whether or not there's a plan um, that there would be some sort of, not necessarily fencing, but maybe fencing, some sort of boundary um, provided um, through because there, there are a number of spots on this property that are little mini uh quarry digs uh, there are a lot of um places that are not safe for the public on this property um is there any plan to try to keep folks on the trail here in this section uh, we don't know what's going here yet um that's the other part of this but um uh, is is there some plan for that uh, as, as planned so far, so as mentioned, we're only, you know, just a little bit into this and, and wanted to engage with you before right. moving forward. Um, along the, the southern side for much of this, um, along this western portion of the southern side, um, there is a fence that is the boundary of RCA Park um, that tends to run along there. Um, there is not a fence along the northern side of this easement. Um, there are a few odd paths and things that, that go off and such toward uh, neighborhoods at the moment that um, maybe people are using informally at the moment. Um, we don't, I, having walked it the other day, I didn't notice anything in the sort of direct path that was a, an imminent threat. Um, that said, that doesn't mean we, it's not there. Um, we could take a more close look and ensure that we have a plan for appropriate safety measures to be in place. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any of those issues directly on this path or in this easement even. But Maybe farther north. Yes, but off if you if you yeah if you go farther north, um, <clears throat> there are some um, some on the property in general. There just are some safety hazards, so uh, that may become an issue uh, for us trying to keep uh, folks um, on the trail in some way. And I don't know that could be done with greenery or, or something. But um, okay, excellent. Um, Great. Um, any other questions? Did you have a question, Ms. Purdy, or a comment? No, nope. I do. Okay. Um, is well, there is it going to be any kind of problem if the rest of the property there does get developed in some fashion, and you know, would it be is this going to limit possibilities for us? The trail itself should not limit your possibilities for developing the rest of the property mm -hmm. um, because of the existing easement and the power high transmission lines. Um, generally speaking, I would think any development that you would do there would be north of the easement. Yeah. Um, so if anything, I think it may benefit future development of this site um, in terms of having trail connections, which again, we've seen is a very 
very desirable um, outcome for developments. And, and just yesterday, we were out, you know, looking at two new county developments that are wanting to connect to both the Clear Creek Trail uh, and the rail trail down there. So I, there's certainly a, a demand from developers, I think, to, to connect to assets like this. I actually kind of meant the reverse of that. Oh. <laughs> um, I was wondering if it's going to be of concern to you how we develop that property there. You know, I don't know how to answer that question. Um, obviously, it's 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 your property to to develop. Um, belongs to the county. There are some city limit considerations, I believe, in there somewhere, and, and that would come within the planning department. Um, obviously, walking it, it's it's very naturally beautiful right now. Um, and as we all know, Bloomington and Monroe County continue to develop. And, you know, the, the more of that natural beauty we can retain, I think would be great for potential trail users. Um, and, and from Julie's comment, it sounds like there's probably some, some old quarry spots that, that may be undevelopable as well in that area. I, so I, no, would, I don't think we, go ahead, Dave. I'm sorry to interrupt, Tim. I, I would add to Commissioner Jones that the only, um, at least as proposed so far in the design, the only area where this project would go out of the power line easement onto county owned property is in the center of this uh, picture, the connection to RCA Park. So, and we have talked as a project team extensively about this would certainly be an area that if the county had a long-term plan of development of this parcel, we would have to either eliminate the connection to RCA Park or reconfigure it, but that is the only area proposed in the design to date for phase one that would stray out of the easement. And we assume that, um, and have assumed from day one that any future development by the county of their property would exclude development in the electrical power lines. Uh, so this would be the only connection, the short uh, pathway connection to RCA Park would be the only area that we would stray out of the east. Okay, thank you. Great. Uh, anyone else have other comments or questions? Okay. So we'll take this under advisement um, and uh, we'll be in touch um, once we talk to legal and figure out what it is we need to do. And, and uh, we appreciate the um, offer to uh, participate in some of the development discussions as well if we if we proceed. So that's excellent. We appreciate uh, you brought this to us and um, and uh, grateful for your attendance today. Excellent. Thank you. Please let me know if you have any questions. Great. We will do so. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you both. All right. Um, and we have another item. Uh, Ms. Birdie. Yes, I'm looking desperately for um, my version of the work session agenda. I know that this is a grant um, agreement that's being brought to you. I'm, I'm doing this for uh, Ms. Cottle. And this grant agreement is between IU Health Bloomington and the Monroe County Health Department. And um, <clears throat> I still, still haven't found it. Um, it is, I believe, for $193,000. And aha, found it. And um, it is to continue the provision of um, providing um, IU Health Bloomington actually provides on East Miller Drive for us immunizations, um, both for adult, adults and for children. They um, handle the reporting of communicable disease information to the state. They are um, involved in disease prevention and health education for people who utilize the services there. They do screening and testing, and they're obviously involved in um, emergency, um, emergency um, health emergencies. And um, this is allowed, yes, it was $193,600, and it comes from the health fund, and it's for 12 months of service. And uh, as I said, um, this is actually a continuation of what we've done before. And this is allowed under um, statute, which I have pulled up in case you needed um, any, if you had questions regarding that um, particular statute. But I so would we need to uh, hear this again next week if we go ahead um, at a regular meeting? No, we could just do this all today. Okay, excellent. Um, let's see if there are comments or questions, Commissioner Jones. 
now. Commissioner Githens. No, this is just a continuation, right, of, of what's been in existence and what has seemed to have worked very, very well for Monroe mm -hmm. County. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, make a motion that we um, ratify the 2021 agreement between um, IU Health Community Health Services and Monroe County Health Department. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Let's see if there are any, <clears throat> if there's any public comment on this item. <clears throat> okay, uh, seeing none, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on ratifying the 2021 agreement? Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Motion is approved three to zero. Great, thank you so much. Um, do we have any other items being brought by uh, staff attendees? I'm looking real quick here. Yep. Looks like we're good. Okay, excellent. All right, um, and with that then, um, unless there's anything for my colleagues, we we are adjourned and um our next uh regular meeting is march 10th uh wednesday march 10th 10 a.m on zoom thanks everyone be well Thank you.